Right, welcome back to the channel. Um, first of all, if you could like, subscribe, comment, all that kind of stuff, hit the bell uh, so you get notifications when I post new videos. It's actually going to be worthwhile, hopefully, as we're going to the summer. I've got some really cool plans. Finally going to get to the circuit, on track, not just stuck in a room blabbering on about karting like some bitter old man that I am. So, but I, I think today I've got, I, there's something that's rattled me and I kind of wanted to talk about it for a while because I'm sort of tired of seeing bad bad governance within the sport, which I think there is, um, particularly at the, the, the upper ends of the sport. Um, I don't think the FIA do a very good role of, of managing top level karting for a number of reasons. But this this kind of, this kind of, gets me because it's an example of something that people who have a fair amount of money wouldn't care about and I suspect a lot of people watching this won't but there's also I'm quite protective over people that are new to the sport or who don't have a big budget and have to face these kind of things and have a consideration with regard to performance that they should never really have to consider and it's to do with this M7 Nassau panel that OTK have. So it retails at like 170 quid or whatever. And to me, that's obscene. It's like a genuinely, like I'm I'm a free market type person. Um, so I don't have an issue with the company creating it. I don't have an issue with the price. I have an issue with the regulation from the FIA that allows this to exist. Um, and I'll explain why. So in my opinion, to, to summarize real quick, Anything that has to be put on a cart from a safety perspective that's homologated, the regulations should be written so that exploitation of that regulation, that mandate for performance gain should be very, very carefully looked at. So with the Nassau panel, you have to run a Nassau panel, you have to run a homologated Nassau panel. Now there's benefits to homologation, it kind of tempers the fire of competition because it limits the development that one can do in a competition because you have to homologate a chassis or whatever. Um, so that makes sense. Homologating engines kind of makes sense. It gives manufacturers a degree of security for their investment um, and that kind of stuff. But that's to do with performance items like chassis. You know, I don't actually think you need to homologate chassis, but nevertheless, homologate engines, whatever. Now, homologation of safety equipment is a different ball game because the primary function of safety equipment or anything that's to display number plates like a NASA panel, I don't know what his safety credentials are. If they're so what so when you introduce those items onto a car, you're saying that you're giving manufacturers an opportunity to exploit that for performance benefit. So that's why you get the different designs and all that kind of stuff. If that results in a manufacturer selling a Nassau panel for 180 quid, right? Then immediately the governing body, in my view, should say, wait a second, something's gone awry here. Why, why, why are we allowing a situation where a Nassau panel is worth 180 quid? The only reason why a Nassau panel would be worth 180 quid is if there was some form of performance benefit. Because we know an M6 panel or other panels aren't that expensive, right? So the price is really a reflection of what the market or the manufacturer thinks the performance benefit is. I'm very skeptical about the performance benefit of a Nassau panel. I, I need to make sure that I'm not saying that these Nassau panels are necessarily better uh, for performance. But is it right that we have Nassau panels where a manufacturer can do these fancy designs and sell it for 180 quid? Mm, I don't think it is. I don't think, I don't think if you're telling drivers you've got to run this, Nassau panel and then they've got to select from the homologated Nassau panels and think well that one looks like it could be quicker maybe I need to test that and I need to test that and I need to test that that shouldn't be a consideration because these are mandated for safety they're not mandated for performance it's not like an engine which is propulsion right and propulsion is the sport right we haven't we've always had engines we've always had chassis we all we we've not always had these safety devices or a NASA panel. I don't know how I would frame it as of what it is. Is it from displaying the number plate? Is it safety? Either way, it's got to be homologated. So at the top level, I don't think, because the FIA, they're involved in the European Championship and the World Championship level, that's where they kind of frequent the scene. You're not going to see much resistance 
because the turnover of drivers there is quite high. The focus now is primarily on juniors. So parents, I don't think are as parents at that level are often very wealthy. It doesn't bother them, you know. But a grassroots level, right? My people, as I, you know, whatever you want to call it, where where we frequent, I'm seeing people going, you know, I'm doing car, I'm having a look at this panel, I'm having, and that, that, if you have to run a Nassau panel by the regulation, in my view, its function should be display the number plate, and if it needs, if it needs to be, if it's a safety thing, the regulation should be written as such that any design <clears throat> is limited to sort of. Um, is, is much more limited in scope for design. That means that a driver doesn't look at an M7 and goes, well, that's totally different to that one. I'm going to have to test it. Maybe it's lower drag, blah, blah, blah. It, that should not happen, right? That should not happen. Because what it does is it, it, it's, it's, bought, it's basically saying, well, this NASA panel can be a benefit for performance, Who's that going to advantage? They're probably the wealthier drivers who can afford 180 quid for a Nassau panel. I mean, I'm engine chassis, I'm fine, I don't care. That's kind of the spot. But a Nassau panel is not something that should cost 180 quid. There should be no opportunity for a company to sell a Nassau panel. Now, I know some people on here are like, I don't care, I've got 180 quid. But there are people that don't have 180 quid spare, right? And it shouldn't have to be a consideration. They shouldn't have to race at club level, in the back of their mind thinking, do I have to spend 180 quid on this piece of bodywork? Shouldn't just shouldn't happen. That's bad governance. The rules have been written very badly if that's allowed. So if you're governing body, if you're introducing safety, your safety devices, and I'm, I, I'm not a safety person, the number one consideration is, do they improve safety? Number two, can they be exploited for performance gain? If they can be ex exploited for performance gain and you're, they're homologated, you've got a problem because, you see, you get these products coming to the market. I can't emulate it and use it. I can't just go, right, I'm going to make my own NASA panel because it has to have a stamp on it. So I can't... So I can't... The market isn't allowed to function properly, whereas the homologation and the... The, the, the requirements to run homologated bodywork mean that I can't offer a cheap alternative, no one else can, right? So that, that to me is, it's, it's more just a, 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 an example of bad governance. There's just someone somewhere doesn't seem to understand that, this is, this is the thing, it might not seem like a lot, and a lot of you might not seem like a lot, but there are drivers that over time, they sometimes don't realise it, when they come to the end of their time in car, and they're worn down by jabs it's like little jabs constant like jabs win boxing fights right just ask tyson fury right not haymakers sometimes it's the jabs that just just what just, just so it's, it's like every time there's a a new regulation drop down bumpers it's another 50 quid should i get a nassau panel that's 180 quid i don't know my engine isn't great maybe it'll, should i do it? and it's just like this constant constant grind con new updates new evo it should I have the new Evo? Do I need the new Bauer? And like I know I'm, a, I, like I said, I'm. You've got to be very careful that we just we aren't just gradually just jabbing drivers out of the sport. And I feel these kind of things, when they're introduced, like the governing body, like if I introduce a new homologated rib protectors or chest protectors, right? And like at the top level now, you have to run homologated stuff. They're like 400, 500 quid for a for a homologated chest protector, right? So. That's going to filter down to club level at some point, and it's going to be like another four hundred quid, da, 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 and it's like it builds and it builds, and, and people just eventually leave. They have enough, and they go and do MX fives or whatever rubbish that's out there. Sorry, MX five lovers, um, but to me, um, I just wanted to talk about this because I, I just see drivers and I can just see the life getting sapped out of them and they don't really know it, some of them. Um, but it's just these little things. And obviously doing the budget cart challenge last year and I really sort of, and this year hopefully, um, I just got to embody being someone kind of new to the sport again because I was sort of thinking, I've got, I've got this budget. And, and you just see these things and you think, man, if I've, got, if I've just bought a cart for 600 quid, right? 
and then a Nassau panel, new, is being sold for almost a third of the price of a full car. Mm, I don't know. I, I just think I just think something's awry there. The regulation. I don't blame Tony Cart, by the way. Tony Cart are doing exactly what they need to do. They need to win. That's all they care about, and I'm I'm fully on board with that. Exploiting every aspect of the regulation. I don't have a problem with OTK. I have a problem with the regulations that allow that to be a a sort of an option on the market because of the protections that homologation and the regulations give them, because obviously I can't replicate the M7 Nassau panel and go and race it, but you know. So, officially anyway, I wouldn't do that, but it's, it's, I'm sure people do that kind of stuff. And so anyway, I just wanted to talk about it. Um, I wanted to hear what your comments were, because I think that there's not much, that, you know, I don't know. I, I feel like drivers probably don't realise that they probably have more influence over the, the direction of the sport. We, we've become such a junior-focused sport now. Um, we've probably got less and less people that are long-term invested in karting. Um, you know, parents might come in and they're looking at leaving at 15 and 16 and you get this churn. You know, so I think the, the licence breakdown now is like 70% of karters are under 16, essentially. So really the market is driven by parents um not by seniors and and i guess you know vocal parents and aren't staying in the sport obviously the numbers seem to suggest that drivers are leaving so even the even vocal parents who who don't like certain things end up leaving the sport anyway with their children so you know change it i mean i i don't know if you're involved in that world i'd love to hear your comments am i off base you know is there is there alternatives? I want to hear from you. You know, I, any comment is good. You know, I like to engage in this kind of thing. So, leave a comment below, and uh, thanks for watching. And um, yeah, hopefully we'll be out very soon on track. So you know, make sure you subscribe and uh, keep an eye on the channel um, for what we've got coming up.